took the pressure off ourselves, and then we started playing like we were supposed to play. With Derek Lowe continuing his postseason resurgence, the Yankees never stood a chance. Derek Lowe has been sensational. This guy threw great curveballs. This guy threw a bunch of changeups and mixed in his sinker. The beauty of Game 7 for me is I pitched because watching is so much more nerve-wracking, and especially what happened last year. We knew we had to score early and then keep on scoring. Johnny Damon, six RBIs tonight, and it's an 8-1 to one Red Sox lead. And uh, we had a convincing lead, but I wasn't going to smile until after that game. The Red Sox are just three outs away from going to the World Series. The rest was history. Now one out away. Swing and a ground ball to second base. Pokey Reese has it. He throws to first, and the Red Sox have won the American League pennant. The Red Sox have done it. They pulled off the miracle. The first team ever to win a series went down three games to none. Move over, babe. The Red Sox are American League champions. The most stunning comeback in baseball history. What happens when 25 guys who care about each other, who are talented, what they do in the face of adversity. We shocked the world. We shocked the world today. They rallied together for one another. Probably the sweetest moment, you know, we could possibly have. Just standing on that field, because I remember last year seeing Jeter and these guys go crazy out on the field. It was so nice for us to be celebrating. So, you know, we finally did it. We're going. World Series. Yeah, baby! Yeah! Four in the road. Four. Yeah, baby. Yeah! Get the... I was happy to do it and actually happy to get over the Yankees. We did it! We did it! To finally overcome what was our nemesis. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My Lord, thank you. He really, you know, can respect what Tim Wakefield did tonight after the game. He stood on the mound. He didn't want to leave because of what happened last year. No one wanted to pull him off. I'm proud of you, man. I'm so happy for you. Uh, that was pretty special for me. The year before, I had to walk off the mound the losing pitcher I actually got to stand on that mound and hug a lot of my teammates. <laughs> Celebrate the American League Championship. There's a lot of respect for, for that team over there. I know there's a lot of history, a lot of emotion. We also know how good they are. Hats off to the Yankees. We, we just beat the best organization in sports history. Number one, baby. We took it to another level. That's it. Number one. We've got four more wins to go, regardless of who it is. The Cardinals are National League champions. We're going to Boston. We feel that... Uh, we got a good a chance as anybody now to win the whole thing. Just look at this place. I mean, you know, the whole Babe Ruth, the whole curse. I mean, after a while, you start believing it. Does this end the curse, or do you have one more step to go? Of course, we got four more wins, and then we'll talk about the curse. But you know what? Right now, there's no curse. We're going to the World Series. Hey, Dio! Look at this! American League champ! Oh, my goodness! When you look back on it, yeah, it was inevitable. We were supposed to play them. I'm not sure it was supposed to turn out the way it did, but um, it was one of the greatest seven-day periods game-wise I've ever been involved in. We accomplished a huge goal for the city of Boston that we finally beat the Yankees. Everybody says that the Yankees Red Sox series is always the World Series, but it's not over yet. We still have a tough team coming in to face in the World Series. We're going to do our very best to try to bring this city a championship. Beating the Yankees filled Red Sox Nation with unbelievable joy. But the 86 year old struggle was far from over. Only a championship could kill the curse and bring back those Boston glory days. Days now long forgotten. The Red Sox won five of the first 15 World Series, including three World Series in the teens when Babe Ruth was here. Up until 1918, uh, they're about as good as it gets the American League. But all that ended with the sale of one player, starting a chain reaction of misfortune that defied belief. Ruth is off to New York to the astonishment, I think, of you know, the baseball community, they can't believe that the Red Sox are going to let this guy go. And, of, of course, that's known as Curse of the Bambino. In our town, so many weird, wild things have happened at the end. You start to look to the larger forces, that's where the Curse of the Bambino comes in. And the Mets are down to their last out. Sixth game, bottom of the tenth. We're up two runs, two outs, two strikes. How can they come back? How can they come back? 
But the Mets did come back, tying the game in heart-wrenching fashion, setting the stage for a surreal moment, one that lives in Boston infamy. Mookie dribbles the ball down the first baseline. It's going to be a worse place for him to hit the ball. The ball hit something and bounced to the side and just, just missed it. Behind the bat! It's one of those where you just sit there and shake your head and go, well, what happened? It's something Red Sox fans have asked for generations, even in the wake of their greatest moments. You know what I tell everybody? That we, the Red Sox, won that World Series three games to four. And Cincinnati has won the World Championship, beating the Boston Red Sox four to three. But no team has brought more World Series gloom to Boston than the Cardinals, dating back to 1946, when Ted Williams and the Red Sox endured seven grueling games, only to have their hopes dashed by one infamous play. I caught the whole Red Sox infield napping. Slaughter is off of the pitch. Walker swings and lines a double to left center. When I saw the ball hit, I was around in second, and I said, I can score, and I never looked up. Slaughter kept on going, rounding third base at full speed, scoring all the way from first. When the relay throw from Johnny Pesky reached home too late for a play on Slaughter. They always blame Pesky for holding the ball, which is really stupid. He took the throw, turned around to look, and here's this guy making this mad run, and he couldn't get anything on the throw. Someone said that I dropped my hands, I did this, I did that. They put a pair of horns on my head, and I said, well, listen, these things happened, and uh, I felt bad about it. It happened again in 1967 when the Cardinals and Red Sox squared off one more time. This was the year of the impossible dream. Carl Yastrzemski, the Triple Crown, and still another reason to believe. Having a ball player like Carl Yastrzemski have the fantastic year that he did and having been a team that by all rights didn't belong there according to the odds, but to even be there, that was something special. Once again, the Red Sox took the Cardinals the full seven games. And with the final one at Fenway Park, it felt as if the baseball gods had put everything in place. It was our destiny. It was the Red Sox year. Jim Lomborg was going to come back with just two days rest. That's okay, because that made the script even better. And he was going to beat Bob Gibson. That was the way it was supposed to end. But it never ends that way for the Red Sox and their fans, who seem doomed for eternity to fall prey to the curse. We didn't go there to lose. The ultimate is winning the World Series. All of your dreams as a kid, you never lost. Welcome to Fenway Park. The Cardinals of the National League are here. And for the third time, the World Series involves the Red Sox and St. Louis. The Cardinals are a great franchise, wonderful tradition. They won more games than any other club in baseball this year. It's the kind of team that you want to see in the World Series. The 100th World Series in the history of baseball. Would this be the time? Would this be the year when 25 men, more than willing to shoulder the cause, would answer the hopes and dreams of generations? When I got to Boston, I was choosing on somebody that, that was supposed to deliver. We have been close before, but to actually bring it over, it's going to be a big thing, and I hope we make that dream come true. It's a cold night here in October. The fans in Boston could care less. For the first time since 1986, they get a chance to see their beloved Red Sox in a World Series. Two teams that are set to do battle. We expect to see a lot of offense, and we'll wait and see which bullpen can nail down wins. Woody Williams and Tim Wakefield on the hill tonight. The Red Sox were opening the series with a seasoned playoff performer in Tim Wakefield. 
the first knuckleball pitcher to start a World Series game since 1948. It was a huge honor for me to throw my spikes on and feel the electricity in the ballpark. And I just took a lot of pride in, in, in being able to be game one starter. He delivers a swing and a miss. He struck him out. And a good start for Wakefield tonight. He smokes this one into the right field corner. It is fair. But the double by Larry Walker proved to be the Cardinals' only hit off Wakefield in the first. Against St. Louis starter Woody Williams, the Red Sox bats made a bit more noise as Johnny Damon picked up where he left off. One at bat. Down the left field line, and Damon will dig for two. It's a leadoff double for Johnny Damon. And Cabrera, oh, that hit him. Knocked him down. With two men on, Williams now had the pitch to Ortiz. Big mistake. Pitch. Swinging a line drive deep to right. If it's fair, it's gone. Three run homer. And Poppy does it again in the first inning of the World Series. Three nothing to Sox. It was actually one of the better pitches I threw, you know, the whole time I was out there, but he's such a good hitter. I wanted to be on his hands. He was down and in where most left-handers like it. You know, to his credit, he put a good swing on it and was able to keep it fair. But the Red Sox weren't done flexing their muscle in the first. Lamar hits one into deep left field. Back at the monster. It is off the green monster. Taguchi plays it well, but it's a double for Lamar. Four straight hitters have just clobbered the ball. Third ball. Grounded right past third. A fair ball. Base hit. Coming in to score is Lamar. The Red Sox now lead 4 0. Now St. Louis needed base runners and got them however they could. Edmonds bunts. Third baseline was wide open. Edmonds moved to third, and Mike Matheny's sacrifice fly brought him home to make it 4-1 to Boston in the second. One inning later, the Cardinals' late-season acquisition came up big once again. Now there's a swing. There's a drive deep down the right field line toward the foul pole. Home run! Larry Walker brought the Cardinals one step closer, but Boston was relentless. Second walk in the inning. And the bases will be loaded up for Boston for the second time in the game. Oh, one pitch. Swing and a right right base hit into right field. Here comes Miller. He scores. Johnny Damon and RBI single. The Red Sox eighth hit of the game, and they lead it 5-2. to two. 